So today I'm going to be showing you how you can set up the soft body simulations within Side Effects Houdini. I'm going to be using a point deformer in order to have low poly versions of these meshes drive really high poly versions. And that's just going to allow us to keep our simulations times really fast and allow us to iterate a lot faster. So let's create a geo node and let's create a sphere within it. I'm going to set the primitive type to polygon and the frequency to something like 8. Then I'm going to drop down a transform modifier and I'm going to increase the Y position to something like 1.5. And finally, let's go ahead and create a vellum config balloon. So in this, uh, I'm going to wire in the first uh, input with that sphere. And then I'm going to create a vellum solver and wire that in as well. Now, the first thing we're going to want to do is we need to have the sphere collide with something. So we can enable the ground position in order to have it uh, collide with the ground. Or we can even create something like a grid and we can wire that into the third input of the vellum cloth. That just allows us to have custom colliders. So if I just uh, lower down the simulation to something like 100 frames and I sim this out, you're going to see that by default it kind of has this jello-y effect to it. Now the main parameters you're going to want to play with in the vellum cloth as well as the vellum pressure is both the stretch stiffness and the bend stiffness. You're going to also want to play around with the vellum pressure stiffness as well. And that has to do with the volume inside, almost like the air inside the object. Um, so playing around with the vellum cloth is kind of like playing with the exterior of the object. So the stiffness kind of represents the stretchiness of those polygons. So if we had a really low stiffness, it means that the stretchiness is going to be really high. So it'll flatten down like a pancake here. Now you're going to see that as I simulate this out, it almost has a jiggly effect to it. And so if you want to have uh, it not have that kind of effect, you're going to want to increase your damping ratio so that the energy isn't transferred as easily across the mesh. You can see as I play it out here now that it doesn't have any of that jiggling effect. So on the opposite side of that, what you can also do is you can increase the stiffness much higher and you can increase the scale in order to have it maintain more of its volume. So the polygons aren't going to stretch as much. And so as I play through here, you can see that the sphere is now maintaining a lot more of its shape. Now, if you wanted to increase the dampness even higher, it's going to look something like wet dough hitting a table. And you see that as it kind of drops down, it kind of splats and maintains its shape without any of that jiggle. So you can tweak different settings here in order to get a different look for your soft body colliders. Um, but it just takes a bit of uh, experimentation in order to find the look that you want. Let's dive into the vellum solver here and let's also add a pop wind node. Because I'm just going to add some wind in the negative Z direction. Now you're going to see that as the wind is affecting this object, it's kind of sliding across our collider. So what we can do is we can increase the amount of friction that's happening so that it rolls more. So going over to the forces tab, increasing the uh, static threshold to something like five, you're going to see that now the object starts to fall and then roll across the table as that friction affects it. So let's have this low poly version now drive a high resolution mesh. In this case, I'm going to use something like the pig head, um, but you can wire in any kind of object that you want. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to roughly line it up so that it fits within the volume of this sphere. So let's move it up here and then let's play with the scale in order to roughly line it up. It doesn't have to be perfect, uh, but you can always tweak this afterwards based on how the simulation is affecting your object. So let's create a point deform node now. And in that point deform, I'm going to wire in the pig head into the first input, our low poly representation into the second input. And then finally, I'm going to use the vellum solver and wired into the third input. I'm going to want to increase the radius of the capture settings just so that it projects properly onto the high poly version. And now as I play through the simulation, you can see that it's now driving our high poly asset. Now to show you the uh, effect of the speed, I'm going to increase the resolution of our pig head 
in a moment here. So I just removed the Z uh, axis wind just so that it plops down here. And if I were to use something like the remesh node in order to increase the density of the polygons, you're going to see that the simulation time is still really fast. So let's do that here. Let's drop in a remesh. And I'm going to decrease the target size to something like 0 0.01. And you can see that this is a pretty dense polygon mesh. So let's once again load up the point to form. And as I play through the simulation, you can see that it's still pretty fast. One of the ways you can compare it is wiring this mesh directly into the valve cloth, and you're going to see how much faster it actually is. So that's one uh, mesh, but what we can do is we can also create a copy to point stop and have this generate a bunch of big heads within an array. So let's do that here just to see how fast the simulation time still is. So under the pig head and the low poly, you can see that they still overlap each other perfectly, which is what you want. Uh, I'm going to create a sphere again, and I'm going to decrease my rows to something like five by five. And then I'm going to move this up here so that it's far off the ground. And finally, I'm going to wire it into a copy to points SOP. So let's first do it with the pig head. So I'm going to put that in the first input and the sphere in the second. And now it's creating the pig heads in an array. And I'm going to move it just a bit more off the ground here. And then I'm going to copy this copy to points SOP. And I'm going to just then wire in the low poly versions. So now they should perfectly line up over top of each other. So let's bring back in our other nodes. And under the first input of our point to form, I'm going to wire in the high poly version, then our low poly representations. And finally, under the vellum cloth, I'm going to wire that into the third input. So here if I just have the vellum solver isolated, you can see that our low poly simulation is happening as expected. And now if I wire in the high poly versions into the point to form, they also fall as expected. Cool, so that's working pretty well. That looks pretty good. So if we were to bring back the original remeshed object, you're once again going to just see how fast it is. So let's go ahead and under the top level, let's add a remesh node. And once again, we're going to lower it to something like 0 0.02 for the target size. And let's re-simulate that. Cool. So that looks pretty good. Again, you can then switch out the object to whatever you want. And the simulation time is going to be still pretty fast. So that's one other nice feature as well. So loading up this tumbleweed uh, demo, you can see that it worked the exact same way. So jumping into the geometry node, you can see that I started with this tumbleweed uh, object, and then I simply shrunk it down. And then I used something like the grid with a orient uh, attribute in order to randomly rotate those tumbleweeds to each of those points. So if I now highlight the copy to points off, you can see that it just randomly oriented those tumbleweeds uh, on each one of those points. Then moving down, I needed to split these off. So in one channel, I needed to create a low poly representation of it. So I just used uh, VDBs and I just smoothed them out, converted them back into VDBs, or sorry, back into polygons, and then remeshed them so that they would be basically spheres that represented those tumbleweeds. In this case, it just allowed a lot more flexibility by using VDBs as it was a lot more accurate to the original high poly version. So we could then take the low poly version of those spheres and have those wired into the vellum solver so that they generated pretty quick. And just as before, uh, I wired those into the point to form. Now the stiffness, dampness, and bend uh, stiffness settings were pretty basic. I wanted to have a bit of give within the mesh as it bounced off, uh, but I didn't want to go too crazy with those uh, soft bodies. So I just set up a pop wind as I did in the other demo and had the wind uh, blow them into these colliders. And using a point to form, uh, as I was mentioning, you could then drive these really high uh, poly meshes. So it does a pretty good job of handing all these small details. Uh, I thought it did a pretty good job of, of creating a realistic transfer of that animation. And overall, I was really happy with the, the final look here. So what 
you can also do with this is you can also have it exported as an alembic file and you can bring it into something like nvidia omniverse crates or you can put it into unreal engine uh, it does a pretty good job of of maintaining that animation so lastly here in this other project uh, for the raspberry it was the exact same process as before i started with a high poly version of the mesh wired it into vdbs in order to remesh them and create a low poly version um, and so they would line up exactly over top of each other and then i used a copy to points in order to create an array of those raspberries and a an array of the of the low poly versions using copy to points as well then i put those through the vellum cloth solver simulated it out and finally wired it all into the point to form so you can see as i'm zooming in here that there was some really nice squash and uh, stretch effects that were happening and it was just really quick to be able to iterate through these different simulations like playing around with the wind speed and the cladding objects uh, it was a really nice workflow anyway i hope this helped you guys out uh, it helped me out on a few projects so i just want to share and i will see you next time